isolation column, that's just a mistake. And uh, <clears throat> primary condenser, which takes the temperature down most of the way. You pump in cold water here, it's an external heating jacket, or cooling jacket, I suppose. And then your distillate, or uh, cooler distillate comes off, and it will run into the condenser. The uh, problem with this one was, is I was trying to get, trying to make a large, wide base on this. Primary tank. Unfortunately, it's really hard to maintain a seal around a large diameter. In fact, uh, that turned out to be the downfall. Even though I have some of this really expensive uh, uh, silicone, RTV silicone rubber, it's expensive by the way, so I was a little bit ticked off when I drilled holes in it and it didn't work. Um, yeah, I tried to seal it with this, and unfortunately, it still just it leaks out through small pores whenever you heat it up, no matter how much I clamp it down. Uh, it's all stainless. I ticked it all up. This actually is probably 1080 steel or, or something like it because it does rust. And um, another problem I had was that this is the top of a beer keg. And um, it doesn't actually match the standard vacuum fitting size. So this is definitely a vacuum stainless part uh, because if you look at the joint, the seal, you'll see it does have a line the standard RTV silicone uh, seal, which has a ridge on both sides, but this is not. So the beer keg is obviously not the same locking mechanism. I'm not sure how that works. Um, it just happens to match the diameter, but it just did not work with the taper on the vacuum stainless fitting. Plus, I'm using a jerry-rigged silicone seal, so wasn't too happy with that. Um, the other thing was, is this is 316 stainless, and I think it's been hardened because I ended up breaking a whole bunch of carbide drills just trying, not even trying to drill through it, but just trying to widen some existing holes that were in it. And uh, I don't know, it, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to drill. I wish I had that on video for you. Um, I actually chucked it up where I used some toe clamps in a drill press held this thing underwater while I was drilling through each of these holes with a carbide drill. And it only worked once or twice, the rest of the times I broke the drill bits off and ended up having to just punch them out and using an undersized uh, screw. And the bottom plate is just this steel plate that I had. Uh, that's a mistapped hole. So unfortunately, I out of the mill. <laughs> I wasn't able to get this as accurate as I wanted. bunch of new stainless, um, vacuum stainless, they all have the current vacuum fittings, clamps, silicone seals, and all this. Um, you can see I have a hot plate in the bottom, which has a heat on it, like a serpentine around it, um, driving at 115 volts, it's running at 12 amps right now, but it's, it's rated for 13 
18 something amp because it's, remember right, it's 1800 watts. It's smoking right now because I think my homemade thermal paste is breaking down. They recommend toothpaste and Vaseline, but I use petroleum jelly because it didn't have Vaseline. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. Um, besides, computers aren't supposed to get above 100 C and they start thermal throttling, so this is going to exceed that temperature quite a bit. So I might have to think of a different way of doing this. You can see they got a ground on the primary column, so if there's a short, I'm not getting electrocuted. I got a silicone rubber here. Back, a little bit of thermal um, resistance so it doesn't transmit to the frame as much. Of course, we got bank clamps, so we will. And uh, yeah, so I just filled it from the top using a funnel to this point. Um, right now, there's about a gallon of water in there. And as long as it doesn't break, hopefully, I'll have boiling water soon. I just have a couple of fittings. And from here on out, it's all stainless tubing, but I figure I can replace it with copper tubing as soon as we start doing, for instance, alcohol distillation. And it runs over to the uh, <clears throat> condenser, which is full of cool, cold water uh, from our well. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven turns of quarter inch stainless tubing. And now we have to, as soon as I start seeing water from out here, I know that it's just or if I see steam coming out, I know I need to put some more cooling condenser. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure that the tube is getting warm. Definitely, yeah, it's getting warm. That might take a while. Okay, so here's the still working. Uh, right now, heating the base, bubbling in there maybe. It sounds like it's bubbling way up here, so the whole column is very, very hot. Um, and from the outlet, there's some water. It wasn't doing that before, so I'm almost certain this is good water. With the exception of not cleaning any of this beforehand. So I wouldn't drink it. We're going to test pH afterwards, and as you can see, it definitely got hot water coming into the condensing coil. So you have bubbles forming the tubes. Yeah. I don't feel any hot air coming out, so I think it's doing its job. Seven hundred. Let me find where I look at it. Six twenty. Yeah, seven fifty, seven forty three on the surface, which is not the hot side. The hot side is actually on the underside. Then uh, this, this tube, the bottom of the tube, is only a hundred and fifty. Yeah, only hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit, which is strange because you can actually hear it boiling inside. Which tells me that uh, either A, the resistance of the steel, thermal resistance, is significant, so the inside's 212, the outside's much cooler. Or like B, maybe the, convectin, the convection, the air is causing it to lower its temperature a lot, so I'm losing a lot of heat. So maybe if I put like a thermal jacket around it, it would work better. It's not a bad idea, I guess. I got a whole lot of surface area to take care of. Um, this is about a foot up. At 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Two feet up, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, 104. There's three feet up, 106. So it's about consistent. Yeah, up here it's 106 or so too. The uh, outlet tube is 154, which is strange. I guess it's a narrow sort of tube, so maybe it's holding heat better. Um, and then 
the sand. Let's see if I can get the inlet to the condenser. It's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. And the outlet, it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So in reality, the condenser is not doing a whole lot. The, uh, this tube. 